Right, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of whatever this is where you guys send me things and I draw with them. Thank you for joining me. Look, this might be an overshare, but I was pretty close to not recording this video just now because I have a massive uh, deep-seated pimple right here. And uh, you can't really see it. It's just it's it presents as just kind of a reddish area at the moment, but it's there. I assure you. Oh, it's oh, it's in there. And uh, anyways, once I wow, I feel like you can maybe I'll put like a little black box over it. That should help, right? Unfortunately, I don't know how to do motion tracking, so anytime I like move, uh, it'll just like be there. Am I? Anyways, forget about it, guys. I'm not that self-conscious. Look, <laughs> look. Okay, guys. Look back. Look. All right. So here's the, here's what we're doing today. I admit that I already started opening this package when I pulled it out of the I pulled it out of the PO box and I started digging my finger in here until I realized what was going on. I realized someone could have sent me something to draw with, and I should finish opening it um, on camera. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna stick my finger back in here. And we're gonna finish. We're gonna finish. We're gonna finish what I started. Okay, here we go. And it's done. Good, good work, everybody. Let's see. Let's see what's in here. <gasps> Got. Now this might be my favorite part of right here. I love these huge rubber bands. Uh huh. Anyways, okay. Let's. All right. Peter draws. Peter, your mission should. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to do the following items: create an unboxing video for this item I have sent. Use all colors in this pastel set at least once, though it can be in multiple pieces of art. Record and publish a video of your attempts for the sake of posterity. It'll be. I'll be fascinated to see what you come up with. The pastels are yours to keep. Oh, I could never figure out what I wanted to do with them. Sincerely, Katie T. And then, then here's her uh, various ways uh, to get in touch with her. Thank you, Katie T. P.S. Do not include my address or real name as listed on the envelope in whatever YouTube. Oh, I, I was just panicking. Like, can I use this one? But I don't. This one is different than that one on the envelope. I think we're good to go. KDT. All right. Wow. Secret names. Well, Peter Draws isn't my real name either. Oh, see inside for instructions. One step ahead of you, KDT. Look at that, guys. We got Crayola Oil Pastels, 28 brilliant colors in a unique hexagon hexagonal hexagonal shape. And then that's what we're supposed to uh, that's what we're supposed to make with them right there. All right, let's see what's inside. <gasps> Almost completely untouched. But how many are there? 28. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I mean, look, I mean, just the way these were sitting kind of like there's a gap in one side, not a gap in the other. Like, what's up with that? Isn't 28 divisible by 2? Why is it uneven? What's going on here? I feel like I'm in the Bermuda Triangle. Are some of these just thinner than these? Or is it because of the hexagonal shape? Look at this, look at this. I solved the crisis. They're pretty even now. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's get started. I gotta go, I gotta find a piece of paper. Gotta find a piece of paper. <sighs> look what I found. I found a big pad of this. It says Excel. Mix media. I don't think that's supposed to, I don't think that means you have to mix the media together. I just think it means maybe it does, but uh, I think it's like the default. You can use all sorts of different stuff on it. So I'm gonna rip out one of these pieces of paper. I'm just gonna rip one out. There we go. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I had to do was determine the true nature of these things. Were they really anything more than? slimy crayons. I'm a bit of a kinetic learner, 
So I toyed with them a bit. I played with them and moved them around on the paper. I did notice they had a bit more heft, heft, heft than, than normal crayons. They were not only bigger and thicker, maybe a little bit shorter, but they were like denser and heavier. And I appreciated that their hexagonalness uh, kept them from rolling around on the paper and the table, which I have recently learned isn't completely level and flat, uh, like normal crayons would. I like this about them. I also realized that uh, they very easily leave marks on the paper, and in my toying and playing with them, I was leaving stray marks on the paper. So when I did finally get down to it, as it were, I flipped the paper over and began drawing. Now the initial instructions that came with these oil pastels, as I think they're called, did specify that I needed to use all 28 of the colors uh, in my little experimental drawing here. So here on the left, in a somewhat legible list, mildly legible, I'm listing out the colors as I use them uh, initially. Each time they're used for the first time, I put them in the list there, and I'm just going at it. See, this, I felt like, as I sat here and drew, I felt like a little kid at a restaurant with one of those little placemat things. And usually at the restaurant, though, they only give you like three or four crayons and they choose the colors for you. Except here, I had all the colors of the rainbow and some. At one point, I was trying to figure out where pink went in the rainbow. Because I never really remembered seeing pink in a rainbow ever. I think it goes kind of in between on either end. And, and kind of in the middle and nowhere. Like between violet and, and red which is kind of an impossible spot in a rainbow. Maybe it's kind of dithering, maybe it kind of disappears out onto the end. I don't know. I remember the one time I ever went to Red Lobster, the waitress was taking us to our table. Maybe this is the hostess. Does the hostess take you to your table? And she paraded us around a large man of ample stature and, and girth who had in front of him two large platters. One platter was full of shelled shrimp. Wait, does shell mean they have shells on them or not shelled? No shells. There was one platter piled with shrimp with shells on them, and then another platter with the, the, the discarded husks. And this man was so large that his arms reminded me of little T-Rex arms because they sprouted out of his sides, and then he could barely touch them together in front of them as they rested on his belly. And as he you know, like ripped apart these shrimp and shoveled them into his mouth. And it was pretty amazing. And the, the hostess kind of paraded us around this man on our way to, to our booth farther into the restaurant like, like they were proud of this guy. Like, like they were so happy with what they had done. Like, look, what we've accomplished here at the Red Lobster. We've got this guy. We've got the little lobsters in the front of the tank that you can look at while you wait for your party to be called. And we've got your four crayons to scribble with at the table. Anyways, obviously I've never done anything like this before, so I really did feel like a kid in the sense that uh, I was just going at it, having fun, scribbling away. Obviously I would never use every single color if I hadn't been instructed to do so. It was both liberating and constricting. I, I felt like I had to continually move on to the next color and before, because I was afraid that I would, I would get the whole drawing done and still have like 12 colors left. I knew that I had 28 total, so I kept moving on, and then about halfway through the drawing... Uh, I had used them all, and then at that point, I went ahead after I had used them all, and I just kind of, you know, winged it and felt free to use whatever colors I wanted after I had used them. Wait, did anything I just said made sense? Anyways, I quickly learned that some colors don't go together well. I'm no color scientist by any stretch of the imagination, and it's not all common sense like you might think it is. For example, you know, uh, orange and pink, if you squish them together, and these oil pastels are very easy to squish together. You can use your finger to squish them together, or just color them on top of each other, and they kind of squish each other together. For, for example, though, if you, like, squish orange and pink together, it might make a really, a, a sh like, a weird shade of brown you didn't intend. But then you might take orange and peach, and peach is almost identical to pink. And those will make a very delightful color. Uh, totally totally different than the orange and pink squished together. I, d I didn't end up using my fingers to blend that much, mostly because my fingers were al always very dirty. And I found that you could use, it was much, much, much more fun to use the lighter colored uh, pastels, like the the yellow, the yellow green, and especially the white one. Uh, maybe, maybe like the, I don't remember what it was called, maybe the sea green, I don't know. 
just the various light colored pastels to kind of scribble over everything and smush it all together, blend it. There was a lot of blending going on and I found that I had to do that kind of continue building up layers to uh, kind of cover up the paper. Otherwise there would be little specks of white paper blending, uh, like poking through, which is fine if that's what you want. But if it's not what you want, then uh, that's what you have to do. And I'm sure a lot of this also depends on which type of paper you use. Maybe there's special paper that's like dedicated or intended for oil pastels. And of course I was just using mixed media paper, whatever that is. Anyways, I had a blast. I got a little bit messy. Uh, I mean, this looks totally like weird, some weird psychedelic dragon pony thing from the netherworld. Uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, I, I had a great, I had a, <laughs> I had a great time. Um, it, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to say. But <laughs> thanks, Katie T, for sending this. Um, yeah. So what? Uh, I don't, I don't even know why I'm still talking. All right, yo, what, yo, what up everybody? Peter here, just a little addendum on the end, just recording with my phone. Um, look, I, I just realized that this thing, even though I'm done, is still super slimy. And so we should probably do something to fix it. And so I bought some fixative, which fixes things and will put a thin layer of some sort of protective coating on it and it'll make it a, everything all better so that it can be handled and everything will be, just, just everything will be better. Okay, all right, let's do that. All right, I'm using groom, groom bot, I'm using this stuff, all right? Final fixative, there's other types of fixative uh, that are called workable fixatives where you can cover it up and then still draw on top of it, but apparently this stuff is more final. Worst case scenario, uh, I put too thick of a layer on, I spray too much, and then there's like weird drips going down it. But then again, maybe that'll look cool. You just gotta embrace the process. All right, let's do it. I'm scared. It said, it said I should definitely test it on something first. I haven't tested it on anything. I'm testing it on this. I'm gonna test it on some, on the floor first. All right. <laughs> so that could have been way too much or way too little. Maybe I'll wait a little while and do one more coat. Directions, there's, there's no directions on here, just lots of warnings. All right, let's do the second and final coat now and be done with it forever. I don't know if you're able to do two coats or one coat. I don't know, just 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 do it. Shia LaBeouf, etc. See you guys later. Have a good day and, uh, you know, peace out. This is to be like one of those video things that ends the scene or wait, no, these are to start the scene. Goodbye. Goodbye anyways.